Always great to have you with us. So first question to you, Carrie. The Jesuit Order has named 27 of its members as being credibly accused of, of sexual assault against children. Uh, what do you make of that as somebody who attended one of these so-called schools? I think that's a low number, um, considering how long the Jesuits have been operating and how long these accusations have been floating so i think that's the number is low but i appreciate that they did fulfill their promise to release the names nigan your thoughts on uh, names being released uh all but three of them are dead and so i think this is uh low in terms of risk for the jesuits um we have to remember that you know there are about 200 current uh, active Jesuits. Uh, it's an all-male order across the country, 200 today, and that there is a, this is a big footprint within Indigenous communities and particularly that the uh, Catholic Church and the Jesuits have a very big, very big impact. And so absolutely that uh, it is a low risk to name these names. So on one level, uh, good for them that they're stepping up and that they're releasing these names so that people can be accountable and also that survivors can be seen and recognized for their experiences. But uh, I, like Carrie, totally agree. There is undoubtedly much more. And it's a matter of how do we begin to believe survivors, support them, and then also uh, bring other members to justice when needed. And not all communities want uh, individuals to be named as well, to work with Indigenous communities to make sure that there's also privacy considerations. Uh, to Nigon's point there, Carrie, is this uh, a little too late to, as most of them that were named are now long gone? Um, too late to get any sort of accountability. Um, I think it's not too late in terms of validating existing survivors. Um, there's always that that um, that uh, idea that oh that didn't happen because there's no names and so now we have concrete proof there's names there's actual people associated who committed these crimes and and uh, verified so there is some sort of um, I'm I'm lost for words right now. Kerry, Nigan uh, touched on this as well, and we did in an interview with uh, the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation earlier this week too. Should there be more, you know, consultation, and we don't know how much there was this time around, leading up to the release of these names with survivors? Well, absolutely. There is an ethical obligation to those who have been harmed. Uh, One hundred percent, they should be at the center of the release of these names. And then also, uh, what is the accountability of the Jesuit order and particularly the Catholic Church in relation to rebuilding these lives, rebuilding these communities? Only it's only a short while back that we heard about the secret deal that the Catholic Church brokered with the Stephen Harper government uh, back way before uh, when they were legally mandated to compensate survivors uh, tens of millions of dollars and brokered a deal to pay much less than that. So uh, we know that the Catholic Church needs to participate within the healing of communities, but center, survivors must be at the center, uh, particularly when a news release comes like this, because people are triggered. Uh, people are facing trauma, and when it's you hear about your, even uh, the perpetrator of harm's name, uh, people oftentimes go into crisis as a result. Carrie, your thoughts on, you know, centering this around survivors before uh, naming it, these names? I think survivors should be the center of it like they're the ones that are dealing with the trauma they're the ones that are still their families are still dealing with everything that happens to them in these schools um intergenerational trauma is very real and i agree with nigon you know having these names just suddenly released and not having um be prepared um as somebody who's gone through the residential school system and having parents who've been survivors and dealing with all of that, it's it brings back a lot of emotion. Especially, well, for me, I'm not I'm not sure how my mother will feel. I'm sure she's she's triggered. Carrie, do you think this might lead the way for other Catholic orders to start naming names? I hope so. I really hope so. If they set an example, then it's not so scary anymore. Like they've, they've already set precedent. So why not, why not name them? 
Uh, Nigon, you know, despite the fact that uh, many of these people have passed on, what do you think might come from this, the release of the names? Well, I hope that Canadians, and you know, the question is, is whether Canadians are paying attention to the story or not. Yeah. I hope that Canadians pay attention because there is still a great deal of doubt out there about the harms that happened predominantly in Catholic-run schools, run the majority of residential schools, and that the doubt amongst Canadians is often fostered by denialists and so on who say terrible things and in, in incorrect statements around residential schools and saying things like, oh, the schools weren't that bad and, and oh, the unmarked graves aren't really unmarked graves and so on. You know, I hope that Canadians pay attention to this story to see that the atrocities that are perpetrated within those schools, uh, this 27 names that are released are just a tip of a very big iceberg. And it's something in which there's a, uh, uh, under the surface of these names, is a great deal of other systemic abuses that the Catholic Church was involved in. And much of that involved the death and the harm of children. And I hope that those who are watching also take good care of yourself. That I know a day like this is very triggering and that, uh, and that you surround yourself with family and your spiritual supports to make sure that you're cared for. Absolutely. Uh, Carrie Negan, uh, we'll leave it there, but always great to hear from you. Amy Glitch.